So they come back with joy. Let me just kind of paraphrase it. He said, they, they, they say to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and, all, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits, he were, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your what? Names are written in, in heaven. Okay, hear me in the Holy Ghost. I can, we can get into that. We've read this scripture. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what? It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, not in the ground. So there's different levels of stuff. Demons are not just like when we say demons, that's not really, honestly, it's not even a fallen angel. The Bible says that hell was created for the devil and his angels, right? When we're talking about demons, demons are not, so there's different levels to this, guys. There's principalities, there's rulers over areas, over territories. When God created the world, you guys gotta understand, he created the unseen first, then the seen realm, okay? And in the seen, that's where we have our earth, planets, everything we can actually visually see with our human eyes. But behind that, God has said, I also created an unseen realm that has divided territories, thrones, principalities, and the what? In, in, in the unseen. But in the second heaven, or where they operate in, in whatever dimension, they're able to see and navigate between ours and theirs. But we can't go into theirs. Or can we? How do we, how can we? Then if we can't go into the unseen, then why does Jesus or why does Paul say, focus on the realities of heaven? Focus on the unseen. You want to know why? Because we can. We do, and this is how we do it. We do it through his spirit. We do it when we fast. We do it when we pray. We do it when we lay hands on the sick, when we cast out devils. We're operating in the unseen when we do those things because we're acknowledging I'm not upset at that person or I'm not angry at, I'm angry at the tormenting spirit inside of me. Or I'm angry at if we see something on the news and we know that's a principality of confusion or that's a power of death over that land, over that region. Or that's a power of promiscu uh, 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 sexual immorality over a certain area. We know, we know that there is an agenda that is happening, right? There's an antichrist agenda in the literature that we, that we read, in the education, uh, things that we read, uh, even in our government. We can see it's totally antichrist. It's totally anti-Bible, anti-Jesus, anti-believers. In fact, anything that we believe in, right, it's almost like media, everything is figuring out ways to, you, you literally have to speak in code. Like you have to say certain things to avoid your, your, your company getting shut down, your videos from not getting posted, all these different things. And Christ said that these things will happen. And right now, though, God is expecting us as believers, despite all the opposition, he's saying that be of good cheer. In the world, you will receive what? Tribulation. But I have overcome the world. And you, and you shall also. So God is trying to get our minds together and saying, look, I understand this is what you're fighting. Okay? So once you understand that, now it's like, if you know that the Holy Ghost is inside of you, why do you grieve it? Why do we even think, okay, like, for example, I can pull up 
uh, an example of a principality here and and you see the real battle that's happening. We understand we're wrestling not against flesh and blood. Do you guys understand that? That means every time we fight each other, we're talking bad to each other. <laughs> like God is like, that's not the real fight. He said, y'all warring against each other. That's just Satan. Okay, you know how Satan really gets us? With our anger, the Bible says, be not angry and sin, right? Or be angry, but sin not. Meaning in temporarily, you could be upset about something, but you don't hold on to it. Why? He said, because just like he spoke to some other, the other Corinthians, he said, if you hold that anger and you keep that, it turns into what? It turns into bitterness. And the Bible says that bitterness becomes what? A poisonous root. So that every time you go back to that same situation of you being hurt or you being upset with that person or that thing, you'll never, ever, ever get the freedom that you want or freedom that you need in Christ Jesus. Because God has called us to love. God has called us to have not harbor unforgiveness. But you let the enemy get what? A door. The Bible says that don't let him get a, um, a footstool. A footstool is like an opening. It's like literally you didn't close the door all the way. And then boom, his foot comes right in. And he goes, oh, thank you. I can come in now. And then all types of manner of evil can manifest in your life. A lot of people get uh, a, a great amount of spirits and a great amount of turmoil by the unforgiveness and the bitterness they hold inside of themselves. And, and more things that add on from there. And you wonder why you don't get used by God is because we're holding so much in and not saying, okay, God, the love of Christ is supposed to come upon me. So therefore, you're supposed to heal and not hate people we should be looking at it as god you set me free i should be seeing other people set free not i want everything to be just perfect the way i want it and i want nothing to ever hurt me again and that's not that's not bible bible is trying to god god is trying to get us to understand you are bought at a price don't sell yourself short like walk in the fullness of me Walk in what the promises of God are for you. Yes, you're battling spiritual things, but you really need to know what you're really up against. But look at look at this here, just for a second. I don't even know if I have it here. Go to Daniel chapter 10. I want to bring it up on Old Testament scripture. You guys have heard of Daniel with the lion's den and, and his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, all that stuff, right? Um, the hardest thing for most Christians is to understand that the first step in your super in your supernatural or spiritual growth is realizing that. Mm -hmm. God is watching what you do. God is watching how you handle things. Do you understand? God is watching. Are you spending time in prayer? Are you fasting? You got to know that there's something. I'm not even going to take that out. There's something in the spirit. When you start to surrender your life and say, God, I want all of you or I don't want none of you. When you get to that place, you will start seeing the things of God start changing and manifesting. You will start seeing a, a, different, a different light of God because we put God in this box and say, all right, this is enough. This is all I want to take. And God is saying, I have more. There's more that's happening. All the Old Testament people they tend to just have these just grandiose, you know, encounters with God. 
And I don't really hear a lot of men and women of God talking about stuff like this today. But this is actually, this is still happening. But look what God, God deals with Daniel. He says, in the third year of the reign of King of Cyrus of Persia, Daniel, also known as Belt, Beltajar. Yeah, I had a friend named that. I forgot. Yeah. Beltezer. Belt, I thought it was Beltezer. <laughs> I'm just like twisted today in my words. Lord, help me. Had another vision. So a vision is when you are awake. You're awake. You're not sleeping. You're fully aware, right? But something happens from that seen to unseen. Look, he says he understood that the vision concerned certain certain uh, concern events certain to happen in the future, times of war and great hardship. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. Check this out. This is what he was doing for three weeks, 21 days. It says, all that time I had eaten no what? Rich food, no meat or wine crossed my lips. So he was not, he was eating food, but he was doing what a lot of people, they call the Daniel fast. But he was doing something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I was like wondering when he was going to come in and really start breaking it down. God is saying you need to consecrate yourself. Consecrate. That's what Paul was saying. When you are a child of God, your body is not your own. Your body holds in a temple of the Holy Spirit. So consecrate means, God, I am dedicating this body to you. That's what means, every, that's what he meant by daily be a living sacrifice, holy, consecrated, separate unto God. So when you're doing, we're doing everything that we're doing throughout the day, we're, we're meeting our quote unquote obligations. And I say quote unquote, because the reality is you can live for God without your school. You can live for God without business. You can live without a uh, God without a house. See, the thing is, we believe that all these things that we're managing or are being stewards over is absolutely necessary for our lives. They're not. They're not absolutely necessary. They're just things that we're dealing with right now. They're things that we choose to hold value in. And God is saying, make sure that you know that everything that you're doing right now should be what? Glorifying me. No, glorifying Jesus. So when you look at your life, are your conversations, are the attitudes, are your interactions with people, are they glorifying God? He says glorify God in what? Your body. Look at what Daniel's doing. Does that look like he's glorifying God? Amen. He says, all that time I had eaten no rich food. He just got this vision after dedicating three weeks to saying, God, I'm choosing you, not myself. I want more of you and less of me and less of this world. He chose not to what? Eat rich foods, anything pleasure, pleasurable to his lips. Look. Nothing pleasurable, anything, meat or wine, cross my lips. And I use no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. Not saying that, I don't know if he was not taking a bath, but one thing I do know is that he was not saying, it's not about me. It's about what God wants to do through me. And when you start understanding that, a light bulb, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, a light bulb should open up and go, wait a second, hold the phone. You mean people are being demonized by their own lust? Duh, yes. Demonized meaning in people are so concerned with themselves and less concerned with the things of God and they're so wrapped up in what are they gonna eat? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna not do, right? Uh, my pride of what am I serving? People say, Lord, bless me with a million dollars, right? Instead of saying, Lord, bless me to reach a million people, a, me a million souls in the kingdom. It's a whole different mindset. 
We look at God as a spiritual ATM machine, as a spiritual uh, magic, uh, what he's called, the genie of the lamp, like Aladdin. Like we just grant my wishes and do what I ask you to do. And because I went to church for an hour, I went to church for 30 minutes. You ain't doing that to please God. You know what pleases God? Faith. And what is faith? Just a belief system? No, God is demanding action out of our lives. God is saying your faith becomes alive when you put the works, when you put the action into it. You become, I was faithful. I made the move, right? He redeemed us through his son's precious blood. He told us, okay, now if you love me, keep my what? Commandments. Follow what I ask you to do. So if he says, be kind to your neighbor, be kind to your neighbor. Be compassionate, be compassionate. But he also says, reject yourself, meaning in reject your stubbornness, be humble, and God will exalt you in due time. Don't get weary of what? Well-doing, for you will reap a harvest in due time. God is saying that you're not fighting against your brothers and sisters and you can't say, oh, I love God and then hate your brother, hate a fellow believer. That's why when I see all those people talk about people on Facebook, all those rock throwing, boulder crashing ministries, Lord, I know that they're not coming from you. I know the love of Christ is not in you. Please, everyone pay attention. I mean, hold, listen, listen. God wants us to live a consecrated life, a life that is separate unto him. And you will see in the Old Testament to New Testament, men and women of God that say, God, you are more than enough. I don't need other things. Many Christians out there self-proclaimed because they have a form of godliness. But they deny the power. They deny the spirit in their lives. They deny what Christ actually meant when he said, you believers will drive out demons. You that actually believe you have the power to heal the sick. Right? To speak in diverse tongues, to speak in tongues, to speak in a heavenly language, to let the Lord God edify you. Daniel was literally in a vision, in a state, he wasn't hallucinating. He was well aware, but he was drawing himself closer to God. He was rejecting his carnal desires. You have carnal desires. You have things that tell you every day, do this for me. This makes me happy. This makes me want to do this. Those Corinthians were struggling with that. They were literally, literally a slave to sin. And he was telling them, don't you guys know that you got the Holy Spirit? You've been baptized. You're set free from sin. It should no longer be your master. You got all those people out there right now dressing up, about to attend parties, already attended parties. You got probably tons of people that literally had a, a what he calls, I can just hear it in the Holy Ghost right now. And you have people went to parties last night and people got raped. People got hurt. People got abused because of the demonic things that we are always, that people are choosing to do with their lives because of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eye. Because people choose to want darkness more than the light of the gospel, more than the light that Christ reveals. And then so many of us Christians are hiding. He, he called us to be what? Salt and light of the earth. He didn't say that we're supposed to have fellowship with darkness, but what? Rather expose their works. But we so scared because we're like, oh, God, we're supposed to be, you know, tippy toe, super ballerina. Let's be uh, non-offensive. I don't want to offend anybody. Christ offended everybody when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except for me. Except through me. That means Buddhists, Hindus, atheists, whoever you are out there, New Age, witchcraft. You think you're into your site, Baha'i faith, 
all paths lead. No, God said broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. But narrow is the gate, the narrow and difficult path, that thin line, being born again, believing in Christ, baptized in Jesus' name, repenting of your sins, meaning repenting away, turning from the old life, turning towards God, filled with the spirit, that narrow life and difficult life is what? Everlasting life and peace. God says, no one is condemned. It says, therefore, he says, no one shall be condemned in Christ if you are what? Walking in the spirit. If you live by the spirit, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But what do you have to do? You have to not walk according to the flesh. God is saying, stop walking according to your flesh. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are here to glorify God, not yourself. When you get your good grades, when you uh, get that good job, when you're starting that new business, glorify God in it. Glorify God with your life. Glorify God in your conversation. When you're online, when you're, when you're emailing, when you're texting. When you're with so-and-so, when you're with your, your, your spouse, in your marriage, glorify God. Glorify God in those relationships. Right? We were cleaning the backyard. We're cleaning our house. And I had to tell Jeremiah, I said, don't do this stuff for yourself. Do it unto God. Glorify God. Say, God, this means more to me. Not Even though in the moment you think you're just doing something and it's not even connected to God whatsoever. When you start to sac sacrifice and saying, God, everything that I do, I'm going to glorify unto you. And you start asking God, God, what do you want out of me? And this is regardless of how people respond. Your walk in Christ should not be based upon what prayers people didn't want from you, what messages people didn't receive from you, right? It does not matter about that. It's your obedience unto Christ. That's all what God is looking for, obedience unto him. He said, those that love me, what? Keep my commandments. They do what I ask them to do. So when they reject you, he said, what? They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. So we're so afraid of rejection, though, because we think it's us. It's not you. You're just co-partnering with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is saying, okay, let's go on this great commission, right? Let's go on this, this, uh, this, this awesome calling. Now, look what happened with Daniel. He said 21 days or three weeks. He was in a state of fasting and prayer, right? And non, non uh, glorify, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Non glorification of self. Think about all the things that please you, right? Just imagine every day you are uh, eating whatever you want, and now all of a sudden you just eat the most plain, raw vegetables. You ain't had no seasoning to it. And you're just like, I'm just eating just to, just to, just for my body, just to sustain itself. And I'm not putting nothing pretty, nothing nice on. You're not throwing makeup on. You're not throwing lotions. You're not doing nothing to really glorify or beautify yourself. Because self is now, God is, you're saying, God, I, I really want more of you. And look what, look what God does. Look what happens. He says, on April 23rd, as I was standing on the bank of a great Tigris River. Tig Tigris, Tigris, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It says, I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen, uh, linen clothing with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning and his eyes flamed like torches. It says his arms and feet shone like what? Polished bronze. And his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. Guys. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. As much as we've been talking about the demonic, the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell you guys, we operate and look completely different in the spirit. You guys need to know when Jesus said that when you see him, you will be like him. He was not just talking about how you look on this planet. 
Hallelujah. I pray right now in the name of Jesus um, that we understand what God is trying to say here. He says, in this vision, what happened to him? He says, only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing. He says, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. They felt the presence of whatever was there. They knew something was going on. He said, they saw nothing. He said, but I saw what I saw, right? He says, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. Just then, a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up still trembling. Wait a second. Who was this person? Do we know? Here, guys, this is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Woo, God, I, I love you. I love you. Come on. Get a chair. Get a chair. <laughs> get a chair. Brace yourself. <laughs> get a chair. Who was this? Who was this? Ask yourself, who was this? See, we can get we can get into all of that. I think you guys have heard enough. Like, I am thoroughly convinced what people are doing out there is not what we're doing. Why? Why? Because you are what? Bought with a price. You guys were purchased by the blood of Jesus. So when someone asks you, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because I was bought at a price. My body is not my own. I, I go to God and I glorify God with my body. Do we look like we're glorifying God if we walk out there saying, trick or treat, smell my feet, blah, 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 blah. Right? No. We're practicing demonic rituals. No matter what, you can't make a, a Ouija board uh, 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 a game. Like, you can't make it something light. I can't say, look, I'm going to use this Ouija board, and now we're going to pray to God, and we're going to try to figure out how to pray to God by going word to word. Its whole sole purpose was to connect to demons or connect to dead spirits, right? Which God said that we shall have no fellowship with. Darkness. But God is trying to show us what side we're really on today. Not whose side you on, at least for some of y'all out there in, in internet world. You can ask yourself whose side are you on. But as for me and my house, hallelujah, we will serve the Lord. And we are on the right side. We are on God's side. And God is just saying to us, glorify your bodies. That means next level. It's not just, oh, we're not participating. We're not participating. God's like, okay, so what after that? What are you doing with your lives, though, on a consistent basis? What means more? This is what happens when you dedicate your life fully to God. When other people standing around you, they can't see what you see. But you know God is showing me something. This is Daniel. He says this. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the day, hayalo, since the first day you begin to what? Pray. Guys, catch this. The first out of the 21 days he began to pray, look what happened. He says, for the first day you begin to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request, hallelujah, hallelujah, has been heard in heaven. Guys, when we fast, when we dedicate that time to God, he said it instantly went into heaven. He said it was heard. It was heard. Now I'm going to be honest. Some of us, we pray for a while, 
And we like, God, you ain't answering nothing. Why is stuff not happening? Why is stuff not changing the way I believe in it? I believe in the supernatural. But I don't see no changes in my life. I don't see change. And we don't even know something is happening behind the scenes. See, we always want God right now. We're the instant gratification generation. We're microwave. Give me my 15 minute sermon or give me my 15 second. It ain't even now. Now it's a TikTok generation. You two things and that's what people get in their brain. No one wants the whole picture. No one wants to put the puzzle, put the pieces together. No one wants to be patient. No one wants to have self-control. No one really wants the things of God. Because with God, there's patience, there's long suffering, there's self-control, there's compassion. Love covers a multitude of sins, meaning you, you forgive people when they hurt you. You don't use, there's no ought that you put against people. Why? Because your oughts are on the cross too. Because Christ died for us. That we shall not put our, our things or our hurts back on other people. But we shall bear the burdens of other people. That we should look at other people and say, man, I used to be in that state of depression. Or I used to be in that state of anxiety. And I'm going to pray for you in the Holy Ghost. And I believe the power of God that set me free will set you free too. That's what God wants. That's what God wants out of us. God wants us to stop fighting ourselves and start fighting for him. Start fighting and doing what he's called us to do. This is what he says.